In the highly competitive market, a substandard product just won't wash with consumers. By the time your new product hits the shops, it has to be whiter than white. And that's where research and development comes in. But there's no point in having a product that just appears to work quite well in the laboratory. It's got to work flawlessly in the real world, which is why testing is so important. When the makers of Purcell were under pressure to develop a new product, they underestimated the importance of a defect, which made their new soap powder so powerful it shredded customers' smalls. The error meant hundreds of millions of pounds went to waste, and it left the reputation of Britain's best-selling detergent in tatters. Anything you can do, I can do better. I can do anything better than you. When you buy a washing powder, you're enlisting in the war between two giant multinationals. Brands like Daz, Bold, Fairy and Ariel are owned by Procter & Gamble. Arch-rival Unilever owns Surf, Comfort and the market leader, Purcell. What a brand does is it takes the thought about decision-making out of our heads. Sooner or later, I'm greater than you. No, you're not. Yes, I am. No, you're not. Yes, I am. No, you're not. Yes, I am. Yes, I am. It's Purcell. It's all right. It's a brand I use. It's brilliant. It's safe. It's fantastic. I don't even think these thoughts. I see it on the supermarket. I buy it. That's how it works. Launched in 1909, Purcell quickly became Britain's favourite washing powder with an unrivalled reputation. No wonder so many of us mums choose new Purcell. It's one of the best loved brands, it's very iconic. It's associated with things like being a good mother, happy families. It has always stood for a balance of good cleaning and care. Now see these chocolate marks. In contrast, Purcell's main competitor, Ariel, was marketed to focus on the hard science of cleaning. Ariel was quite prepared to say, let's not fuss about these emotional issues, they don't matter. It was all about um, washing your clothes and getting rid of stains and, and that's it. With Ariel Automatic, you can wash clothes up clean even when you don't boil wash. Over the years, Ariel's scientific approach appealed to more and more shoppers. By the 1990s, Purcell's dominance was on the wane and the stage was set for an almighty face-off between two super brands. They call it the Soap Wars. There was a lot of animosity. Ariel and Purcell were really banging heads together. A lot of frustration, a lot of intensity. The Purcell team decided it was time to make a direct attack on Ariel's tough-on-stains territory. They started to develop a new supercharged product line to be called Purcell Power. The idea that you would have a, a much more high-powered detergent... ..was something that, that, that sounds extremely logical. Rumours of a miraculous stain-busting ingredient in Purcell's new product quickly reached the owners of Ariel, Procter & Gamble. They believed the cleaning agent would be too powerful for general use, and they told Purcell's team so in no uncertain terms. P&G had made it very clear to our business at the highest possible level we don't like what you're doing. We think it is risky. If you do it, we will throw the book at you. It was a highly unusual move. Top people from one company contacting a rival to talk about a competing product. It could have sent Unilever into a spin, but the company held its nerve. All washing powders do two things. Number one, they clean clothes. Number two, they all, I repeat, all damage clothes because the washing process necessarily damages the clothing as you do the wash. It's inevitable. Parcel Power bosses were confident their own tests showed they'd got the right balance between tough cleaning and damage to clothes. And in April 94, Purcell Power hit the shops. The launch was 
probably the biggest we had ever done. All over the country, people are discovering a new power. It's called New Persil Power, and it has the power of the unique patented accelerator. Unilever sent sample packs of the new powder to more than 10 million households in the country. They even came up with a catchy name for the stain-removing ingredient, a manganese catalyst. They had this term called the accelerator, which, which sounded a bit like um, the time travel capsule that, that Doctor Who uses, and scientists in white coats, which, which Purcell hadn't really done before. The accelerator makes Purcell power work faster and harder on difficult stains like red wine. It was powerful, it was aggressive, and yes, it was very effective. Customers were instantly impressed with the detergent's high-octane cleaning. It looked like Purcell Power had hung the competition out to dry. New Purcell Power gives everyone the power to get more tough stains out. First time, first wash. But the aerial team decided it was time to wash their rivals' dirty laundry in public. So they sent photos of clothes washed with Purcell Power to national newspapers across Europe. Pictures arrived on the picture desk of striped boxer shorts with holes in them. Along with a press release saying this is what happens when you use Purcell Power. And there was a lovely phrase in it. They used the phrase, if you use this product, your clothes will become shredded to the point of indecency. I mean, I don't think that the picture desk could believe their luck. When you come out boldly and say that and put a bit of proof behind it, which they've done, you could describe it as an Exocet missile. Oh, good Lord. Surely that's not true. Surely, surely that can't be right. Well, they've produced this product, which is actually harming the clothes that it's supposed to be washing. Before long, consumers were checking their garments for signs of damage, and soon people were sending their tattered clothes to Unilever. The volume that we had to deal with was just staggering. They were just getting inundated with sort of piles of clothes and, and people who'd sort of, you know, bought something six months ago and thought, oh, you know, this is a good chance to get, to get a refund. And we had a warehouse full of garments which customers had sent back. They might have a pretty old pair of underpants that were practically on their last legs anyway, and they would say, ah, oh, chance for me to get a nice new pair of underpants here. To make matters worse, the Consumers Association magazine Witch stepped in to announce they were going to carry out their own independent tests. It raised the stakes considerably. And there was an immense excitement both within the organisation and indeed from the media. The washing powder Persil Power does damage some clothes, according to the Consumers Association. Well, perhaps not shredded to the point of indecency, the test garments did leave Persil Power dangerously exposed. We hang up on washing lines the clothes that we had uh, washed with their holes showing nicely. They had people on a catwalk. The impact clearly was uh, dramatic. Andrew Seth did his best to bat away the bad publicity. I don't think consumers think we made a mistake, except when they've been interfered with and told to look in places that really, frankly, they're not often going to look. Here's a towel that has been washed in Purcell for two years, twice a week. You can see there's not much wrong with this. In laboratories, it is possible to say that you can find a situation where you might describe the product as defective. It's stuff and nonsense. It's a laboratory situation. It's not what consumers believe. Our tests reflect the actual way in which ordinary consumers use the product, and that's how we tested this product. Suddenly, you begin to question your own judgment, and indeed the judgment of the key people I had around me, and it was a very, very black time for all of us. They had reduced the amount of accelerator in Purcell Power, but nine months after launch, shops were losing faith. Tesco started removing personal power from the shelves and shortly after that Sainsbury's started doing the same. The retreat, if you want to call it the retreat, was very, very costly. Maybe it's a bit like 
Napoleon's soldiers coming back from Moscow. We had not conquered Moscow. We were on the run by then. It cost a bundle. Purcell Power's unceremonious removal from the supermarket shelves marked a humiliating end for the brand. It's difficult to put an exact price on the failure, but some analysts believe Unilever invested as much as a quarter of a billion pounds in Purcell Power, only to have to go straight back to the drawing board. It seems incredible that such a highly regarded company should have got itself into such a mess. That perception of a brand is such a precious thing that you never mess with it. You never, ever take a risk with it. Particularly in today's marketplaces, which are so competitive, there's real pressure to innovate and innovate fast. I think it was R&D, in my view, rightfully being aggressive in terms of what they wanted to do and producing different formulations, getting hold of an idea and maybe running with it too quickly, to be fair, but also because of intense competitive activity and scrutiny, there's pressure on people to cut corners. Under pressure, Purcell Power had been developed to maximise stain busting at the expense of product care. The problem was that we had pushed the cleaning credentials of the brand a little bit further than perhaps we ought to have done. And the result of that was that the level of damage was greater than perhaps we ought to have been responsible for. One thing that most of us are not particularly good at is spotting our own mistakes. That's just human, really. But in business, it's a real problem because competitive markets are incredibly unforgiving of any errors that a company makes. The business skill that's so important is recognising your weaknesses before your competitors do. <laughs>